our um, team Bandy, actually, on eHow. Um, I'm Michelle. I'm Nina. I'm um, And we built a gray water recycling unit. Um, this is basically the idea behind this is to use the water from your household appliance. So we've got a dishwasher here behind us that um, we hooked up and that's providing our water and it's filtering through, which we'll talk about in a second. And then um, the outflow is something that will be used you know, either for the actual toilet or um, irrigation for your yard, your yard, which really those things don't have to be like clean drinking water. So they can be filtered through and used and nobody needs perfectly clean water to flush their toilet. So um, this, um, really what is gray water? I think a lot of people probably don't understand what gray water is. And it's not water that comes from your toilet. That's obviously black water or sewage. It's something that's going to come from like a washing machine or a dishwasher. It's still dirty, needs some cleaning to be used, but it's not sewage. Um, and of course, you're going to want to look at your um, local law, law to make sure you're doing everything right. But um, so it's important to do this one because people, especially in the south and nicer spots, they like to have nice green water lawns. And there's no sense in using fresh, clean water when you can reuse water, recycle water. And places like in um, air regions, 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 like the Southwest, obviously recycling water is crucial. So something like this for the back of your toilet, you'd be saving so much water, which is very it's a precious resource out there. So this would really give you a great chance to um, still do everything you need to do to live where you live, but not use the water. Um, so what's required to build this? I'm going to go that. Uh, we need simple materials to come from the world to make this washer, a bathtub, uh, one inch and a half inch diameter rocks, two inch PVC uh, parking, uh, two inch PVC uh, 90 degree uh, elbow joints, holes, uh, supporting material, we need wooden blocks, uh, some plants, uh, the most important thing we need to use uh, phosphor free uh, soap detergent for the dishwasher. We don't want to kill the plants. Uh, some clothing, uh, both power bill and the body. That's it. So simple and to find anywhere. Yeah, we were actually able to reduce um, old products from the local habitat for humanity home store. And so everything, minus a couple of small parts, of course not the plants here, but everything was reused and bought really cheap. So that's great. Um, so how we designed this project, um, we of course needed to support the bottom because this is pretty heavy. I mean, we've got a lot of water and gravel on this. And you want to make sure that the bottom of the tub is supported. So um, we put center blocks and the two by four lever down here. Also, um, at the very bottom is about an inch layer thick of gravel, and then we put a pipe. This is actually connected with the 90 degree elbow beam that Carl was talking about to a long um, PVC pipe, a two inch PVC pipe, and there's drilled holes in it, which is a quarter of an inch to half an inch in diameter holes, and they're all around it. And that's what the water is going through and squeezing out from the bottom. There's also a screen wrapped around it, so when these plants grow big and strong, they're not going to grow into the holes there. Um, also, um, we put more gravel on top of that, and then all of these plants are either wetland plants or wet loading plants. Um, we actually have a cattail down here, which most people are pretty familiar with what a cattail looks like. It's a corn dog looking little flower. Um, this is called swamp dock. Um, it's a very common wetland plant. It actually flowers, and it seems to be doing really well here because there's a bunch of flowering um, buds right here. There's also, we believe this is a, a buttercup. This, I believe, is actually part of the willow tree. <laughs> so this would be ideal for outside. Um, you, they need to have sunlight. And we also use just one tub. And I think if you were to do this, um, to construct it, you really get it to filter through. You'd want to have anywhere from you know up to three tubs and have it stacked with a really strong frame. The idea would be the more um, surface the, with the gravel and the plants, it would create a bigger water. So that's what we have. This dishwasher is running through. It's running through the pipe, filtering from the bottom, and as it comes up, um, it's running through this outflow hole right here, which is pretty much ideally that would go outside. So okay. as for how it's being filtered, as Michelle said, 
when water enters the dishwasher or washing machine, it is basically clean, drinkable water. So when it comes out, it's going to contain detergent, perhaps fiber with the washing machine, or organic matter if it's a dishwasher. So when it comes to the tub, it is cleaned by bacteria that live around the plant's roots. And so the plant's roots, being wetland plants, they give off oxygen. So we have oxygen zones around the roots where aerobic bacteria live. And then outside of these zones, we have anaerobic bacteria. So both aerobic and anaerobic bacteria work together to remove organic matter and pollutants from the water. Also, this bacteria, it needs two things. It needs temperature and it needs time. So temperature, basically, the warmer it is, the better the bacteria can do their job. So if you live in a very cold climate, this would be a seasonal constructed wetland, or you can do it inside with the help of a grill lamp. As for time, you need a large basin and a low flow rate. And you can tell from the effluent that it is not coming out very fast. And also, as Michelle said, you can do a tiered system. You can have three tubs stacked on top of each other, which would also increase the time. Also, the gravel, it helps filter the larger particulates out. And it helps it with the uh, creation of a sudden basin. So the finer particulates, like the soil from the came from the plant roots, they fill up to the bottom. So the water that comes across the top is mostly clear. So when this is working, you can test your water, you can look at it, and you can see are there any total suspended solids, which in layman's terms is just floating gunk, and our wetland is working because it's mostly clear water. You can get fairly cheap tests, which can, which can test for uh, nutrients like phosphorus and nitrate. And so you'd be removing the phosphorus and nitrates through the plant uptake before it goes out into the natural environment and cause algae blooms. And then there's also more expensive tests if you're more serious about this. Um, as for maintenance, if you trim off dead leaves so they don't clog any of the pipes. Um, you want to get plants that will have fairly deep roots so there'll be a reasonable spread of the um, oxygen germs for the bacteria. Also, it is very important that you check the state laws where you're living. Generally, drier states are more lenient when it comes to discharging gray water. If you live in a more strict state, you may have to say that this is just a water garden. And so, otherwise, you can use this water um, to flush your toilet or to irrigate your yard. You have to be careful. I advise using this water for more decorative landscaping. If you want to use it to water crops, like say if you're growing broccoli and tomatoes, you can take more care and actually test your water to make sure that the plants you're going to eat aren't uptaking, uptaking anything hazardous, essentially. And so, yeah, anything else to add? So it's been a really good project to see come together. Um, and it's Obviously something that ideally would be outside and really the materials are cheap and easy to get. It's pretty easy to um, find the plants and um, you know, it's, it's a great project. I mean, especially if you have a yard and you want to water it, this is free water.